In this video, I will explain the second method to incorporate risk and uncertainty in project evaluations. This method is called expected value analysis, and expected value is the difference between expected profits and expected costs. Expected profit is the probability of receiving a profit multiplied by the profit, by the payoff. And the expected cost is the prob probability that a certain cost will be incurred multiplied by, by that cost. Let's assume a Wheel of Fortune that has 24 slots and three of these slots uh, have red color. So you randomly turn this uh, wheel of a slot and if you get a red color, you will win $5. And if you get any color other than uh, red, you will lose $1. So let's see what would be the expected value of this game and what is the meaning of the expected value uh, result. So the probability of success is 3 over 24, and the probability of failure is going to be 21 divided by 24. So the expected value equals expected value of profit minus expected value of cost. Expected value of this game is minus 25 cents. So it means that if we play this game over and over again, the average gain per bet, the average gain per game uh, is going to be uh, 25 cents. So if we play this game over and over again, uh, we will lose 25 cents per game. Let's uh, work on this example. Assume a drilling well that costs $400,000 and there are three possible outcomes. We have 70% probability that uh, we get a dry hole, which means uh, we, there will be no outcome uh, and we just have the cost of $400,000 at the present time. There is a 25% probability of success that we uh, get a producer well, which can be immediately sold at a uh, price of uh, $2.5 million. And we have 5% probability that we drill a well that is a producer and can be sold immediately at $4 million. Let's calculate the uh, project expected value. So uh, this is the expected value of failure, 70% multiply by, we have just $400,000 of cost, there is no uh, income, revenue, or profit in this case. And we have two cases of, uh, uh, we have two cases of success we have 25% of success that we get a producer well and we can sell it at $2.5 million, but we still have the $400,000 of costs. And also we have uh, another success case uh, with probability of 5% that is uh, going to yield $4 million of immediate uh, income and we have uh, $400,000 $400, of drilling cost. And the summation is going to be $425,000, uh, the expected value of this project. So in each case, we multiply the probability of that event by the outcome of that event. So this is the outcome, this, this is the failure case, this is the outcome of the failure and this is the probability. Here, this is the out, this uh, is the, uh, one of the success cases. This is 25% uh, probability of uh, success 
And in case of success, we are going to have $2.5 million, but still we have to pay the drilling cost and so on. Please note that the $425,000 of expected value for this project is a statistical term and it means that the average of uh, $425,000 will be achieved in long term if we do this drilling, if we play this game, if we uh, drill this uh, field over and over again, uh, holding the, the probabilities and costs and incomes constant, this is the expected value that we are going to uh, achieve after doing the drilling again over and over again. Another example, let's assume uh, an investment project requires the initial investment cost of $100,000 and there are two uh, possible outcomes. There is 30% uh, of success that uh, leads to annual uh, profit of uh, $60,000 for uh, five years equal uh, payments of $60,000 for five years salvage value is going to be zero and the 70 percent failure that we uh, receive nothing there is no uh, annual profit and salvage would be zero let's calculate the expected NPV for this project uh, assuming the minimum discount rate of 12 percent So we uh, draw these two cases in the timeline. Uh, there is 30% uh, of success that uh, we uh, have $100,000 of uh, cost at present time. And this, in this case of success, we are going to have $60,000, uh, annual income of $60,000 per year from year one to year five. In case of failure, we uh, still need to pay the initial uh, cost for this uh, project, but we will earn nothing in the uh, future years. So in this case, we need to calculate the NPV of each case, multiply that by the probability, and then uh, make a summation over all the possible cases. So here uh, we have the 30% uh, probability of success. This is the NPV of uh, success. This shows the NPV of success. We have $100,000 of cost at the present time and we have uh, five equal payments of 16 of $60,000 uh, from year one to year five. And uh, uh, probability of failure, multiply the, uh, the failure case, NPV of failure, which is going to be just the $100,000 of cost at the present time, and the expected uh, NPV for this project, which is a negative value. So if we consider risk in this project, meaning that we are assuming 30% uh, probability for success and 70% probability for failure, we are going to have expected, uh, we are going to have negative expected NPV, which means that this project is not a good project for investment. Note that the risk-free NPV, meaning that probability of success is 100%, is going to be uh, a positive number, which means this project is economically satisfactory. Now let's calculate the expected rate of return for this example. Uh, again, the, the example is the same. We have a project that requires $100,000 of uh, investment at the present time. There is 30% of success that yields $60,000 of income for five years from year one to year five. And there is 70% of failure that we will earn nothing. The, the annual profit and uh, the salvage value will be zero. So expected rate of return is the rate that makes the expected NPV equal zero. 
So the equation for expected rate of return is expected present uh, value of income equals expected uh, present value of cost. Uh, so in case of uh, success, we are going to have $60,000 for five years and the probability, this is the present value of this $60,000 and this is when we multiply that with the prob probability of uh, success, it gives us the expected pre present value of uh, income. And uh, on, on the right hand side, we are going to have the expected value of cost, which is going to be uh, $100,000 if uh, we, uh, we have, uh, in case of success, uh, multiply by the probability of success, and uh, also plus uh, $100,000 uh, in case of failure, mul multiply by the probability of failure. And you can see, because this cost is shared between these two cases, so it stays unchanged. Uh, because the, the summation of this probability equals these two probabilities equals uh, one. So expected present value of income equals expected present value of costs. And solving this equation for I, we will get the rate of return of minus 3.4%. There is another way to calculate the expected rate of return for this project, which uh, we can calculate the expected rate of return uh, from expected cash flow. How do we calculate the expected uh, cash flow? Uh, for each year, for each column, we calculate the expected money that will happen in that year. For example, in this year, we have uh, $100,000 of investment with probability of 30% plus uh, $100,000 of investment uh, at probability of 70% failure. And uh, for the year one, we are going to have uh, $60,000 of income, but the probability of this income is going to be 30%. So. Uh, $60,000 multiplied by 30%. And uh, we have the zero income with probability of 70%, which I didn't write it here because it equals zero. And same for the other, for the other years. And we calculate the summation. So in each year, we write the expected cash flow. We, we write the expected money uh, that is going to happen in that year. For year one, we are going to have the $100,000 of investment. Again, because this investment is, uh, is, is, is shared, is common for both failure and success, it stays unchanged. But for the other years, because we have income only for uh, the success scenario, we multiply the, uh, these uh, $60,000 of income by 30%, and we are going to have $18,000 for uh, the uh, year one to year five. So we can calculate the rate of return same as what we used to do uh, for a cash flow. And uh, it will uh, be, uh, it, it might be easier to just uh, write it, the uh, rate of return equation for uh, this cash flow. We have $100,000 of costs and we have $18,000 of income from year one to year five. Present value of cost equals present value of income. And uh, we solve this equation using the Excel or any other spreadsheet.